Everything you need to know about fuel in Formula One. Everyone talks about the drivers, the cars, the teams, but no one seems to mention fuel all too much. So I thought, you know what, let's make a video all about how important fuel is in Formula One. It might surprise you to know that the fuel that you pick up at your local petrol station and those being pumped into your favourite Formula One car aren't too dissimilar from each other. They're about 99% the same, with that oh-so-crucial 1% difference. Back in 2011, Shell and Ferrari decided to test out these differences. Fernando Alonso hopped in their 2009 car and drove four laps using their race fuel before completing four laps using their regular petrol station fuel. Surprisingly, the regular fuel was only 9 tenths of a second slower than the race fuel. They each had their own benefits with the normal fuel allowing for a higher top speed at the end of the straight, whilst the race fuel provided better acceleration. But what fuel is running through these new 2022 cars and how does it impact their performance? Let's take a look. What type of fuel is used? Unlike other series, F1 uses petrol due to its high energy density, which is great when you're trying to maximise space within a car. Additionally, it's chemically stable, so can be stored at room temperatures and normal pressures, making it safe and easy to transport between races. The fuel used in Formula 1 has been heavily regulated by the FIA since the late 1990s, introducing a rule stating that fuel had to be Euro 95 standard, which basically means it needs to use the same compounds as petrol that you'd pop in your own car. Article 16 of the 2022 Sporting Regulations covers what type of fuel can be used, the specific chemical component and the amounts of them allowed, ensuring that all fuels are a minimum of 87 octane. Creating a fuel for an F1 car is a tightly controlled mix, trying to optimise the internal combustion engine's performance. When Petronas first partnered up with Mercedes, their first fuel was developed within four months. But even then, it's still constantly going through tweaks and updates just like every other part of the car. However, to do this, teams can't add any additional power-boosting chemicals to the fuels that you wouldn't see on the road. This is because in the 1980s, teams decided to experiment with exotic fuels under less strict rules, some of which were extremely toxic and flammable. The 2022 cars, on the other hand, in F1's bid to improve the sport's environmental impact, have to include a mix of 90% fossil fuels and 10% ethanol. Last year, the cars had to include only 5.75% biocomponents. Within just five years, F1 is hoping to switch from 10% to 100% renewable fuel. Coinciding with the new power units expected in 2025, the fuel will potentially be created from waste or a carbon capture scheme, drawing CO2 out of the air. Either of these solutions mean that F1 wouldn't be producing any extra pollution into the atmosphere, instead taking it out, using it and then putting it back. How much fuel is used? Unusually, the amount of fuel an F1 car uses is actually calculated by weight instead of litres or gallons, as the mass doesn't alter when there's changes in temperature. And F1 has strict rules ensuring that fuel isn't stored at less than 10 degrees below the ambient temperature for each session, as chilled fuel can store more power. Since 2019, cars can use up to 110 kilograms of fuel during each 305km race. This all must be carried inside the car's fuel tank as refueling during a Grand Prix has been banned since 2010 because of the high safety risks and to save money. For one race weekend, a team would use an average of 1,200 to 1,400 litres, but they usually ship around 2,000 litres of fuel just in case. This may sound like a lot of fuel, but a 23-race F1 calendar would see all 20 cars use less fuel than a jumbo jet flying from London to New York. Yet unlike your regular road car, F1 cars don't feature a fuel gauge as they'd be too inaccurate inside the tank at their high speeds. Instead, teams will use a mobile trolley filling station called a Bowser, no, this is not Mario Kart, to drain and weigh how much fuel the car is consuming. Despite their precise measurements, it isn't uncommon for a car to be disqualified for being underfueled and failing to provide the one litre fuel sample required by the FIA at the end of the race. It was this rule that saw Sebastian Vettel lose his podium finish in Hungary last year. 
Who supplies the fuel? Unlike the tyres, there isn't one standard fuel supplier for all the teams, or even across teams running the same power units. For example, Mercedes and their customer teams Aston Martin and Williams are supplied by Petronas, but McLaren have partnered with Golf instead. Ferrari has had a long-term collaboration with Shell since 1996, while Alpine uses BP and ExxonMobil, or ESSO as you may know them, supply Red Bull's fuel. Ahead of every season, two separate 5 litre samples of the fuel a supplier plans to use is sent to the FIA's lab in the UK to test it to ensure it's legal and provide a genetic code or fingerprint for the fuel to be used when checking throughout a race weekend. Another 25 litres are sent to calibrate the car's fuel flow meter. If a team wants to run a new batch of fuel, it has to go back through that process every time, which takes about three to four weeks. Each team can have up to five formulations approved for the season, but can only have two available at each race. During the race weekend, to prevent teams from using illegal fuels, the FIA will take random samples including from the drivers who finish on the podium and cross-reference the sample with the fuel's fingerprint using a gas chromatograph to identify the compounds used. Using an illegal fuel results in disqualification. As an example, in 1997, Mika Hakkinen was disqualified from the Belgian Grand Prix and lost his third place finish after it was found that his fuel was not one of the ones McLaren were allowed. How does fuel impact performance? Although all the fuels use the same chemicals, they can have a big impact on an F1 car's performance in several different ways, and a new fuel mixture can boost a team by giving them an extra 5 horsepower in some cases, which can make or break their championship chances. Firstly, each fuel is specifically tweaked to optimize the engine's performance. The need to maximize the power available with a low consumption of fuel whilst not overstretching the engine's lifespan. Anytime an engine receives an upgrade, it's likely that the fuel will have to change too to match the new performance characteristics. However, in-season fuel changes aren't allowed anymore, so teams and their suppliers need to collaborate closely to ensure they're both developing in the same direction. The impact they have on a car's performance means that the specific formulas used are so closely guarded by suppliers. They go to extreme lengths to keep them a secret from their rivals, including additional security or transporting it back to their lab to be disposed of to prevent a team coming across it. Back in the old days, rival personnel used to drill into the underside of fuel drums to steal a sample. Fuels can also be adapted to different weather conditions or circuits. For example, the high altitudes of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez circuit in Mexico means the air is less dense and it's harder to ensure the right ratio of air to fuel in the internal combustion engine. Probably the most obvious way fuel can have a significant impact on car performance is by its weight and the car's fuel efficiency. Although each car can use a maximum of 110 kilograms of fuel per race, teams very rarely fill the tank to the maximum. Instead, their engineers and strategists have to establish what is the optimum fuel load to get them to the end of the race without them carrying unnecessary weight from extra fuel. They can short fuel by around 5 to 15 kilograms and use the benefits of a lighter car to balance the fact that the driver might need to lift and coast later in the race, but this usually isn't needed. Any laps behind a safety car, under a virtual safety car or with a tow down the straights all reduce fuel consumption. Fuel also impacts the cars from their very first designs. The density of the fuel has to be worked out before a team can finalise their fuel tank, and this ultimately can have knock-on effects to the aerodynamic design of the car when trying to fit many components in a very limited space. There's also fuel flow that can have an impact on an F1 car's performance. At peak power, the engine isn't allowed to consume more than 100 kilograms of fuel per hour. Since 2014, all cars have had fuel flow sensors on board, checking the flow 2,200 times per second. Back in 2014, Daniel Ricciardo was disqualified from the Australian Grand Prix for going over this limit and using unauthorised methods to measure their fuel flow, although Red Bull blamed the FIA for unreliable sensors. There you have it, everything you needed to know about the fuel used in Formula 1 and how much it impacts car performance. Are you happy to see the sport switch to more sustainable fuels? Let us know in the comment section below.